During this Holy Week, we are following Jesus all the way to the cross. Have you ever wondered what it must have been like to be one of the disciples during that traumatic week? Imagine what their emotions were, not to mention their confusion about the unfolding drama. The disciple who attracts most attention and indeed cops most criticism is Peter. Peter's behavior during Holy Week exposes the worst traits in his character. We see this clearly illustrated in the events immediately following Jesus' arrest. The gang that had seized Jesus led him to Caiaphas, the chief priest, where the religious scholars had assembled. The question is, where was Peter? In Matthew chapter 26 at verses 57 and 58a, we read, those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of the law and the elders had assembled. But Peter followed him at a distance, right up to the courtyard of the high priest. Peter followed Jesus at a distance. You might be familiar with the words from the King James translation, but Peter followed Jesus afar off. At this critical time when Jesus needed Peter's support most, he went missing. In the behavior of Peter, we have an example of the breakdown which is so often characteristic of people who are followers of Jesus. There are four downward steps in Peter's failure. Herbert Cragg wrote this, Spiritual declension is not necessarily rapid. It may be as insidiously slow as a step, but at every stage of it, you are on a plane which is lower than the last. So for a moment then, let's trace the steps that led Peter to follow Jesus from a distance. Firstly, Peter's confidence was misplaced. Verse 35a, but Peter declared, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. Peter's determination, based on self-confidence, assumed exemption from the possibility of failure. He had forgotten the lessons from his past, the walking on water incident, and his conduct during the washing of the feet episode. Such experiences should have made Peter less boastful and less self-confident. The root of his trouble was that he trusted himself. He thought he could do more than the others. He attempted to be more courageous, only to be humiliated by failure. We must beware of self-confidence in our Christian lives. 
We need to learn from the mistakes we have made in the past. Albert Einstein's definition of insanity was doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Secondly, Peter's communion was broken. Verse 40, then Jesus returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Could you men not keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Jesus longed for his disciples to stick the pace and pray in the garden of Gethsemane through the night when he could talk with them intimately. Jesus singled Peter out for rebuke. His is the only name that is mentioned here. Peter's spirit was willing, but his flesh was weak. Verse 41b. Here is the interesting way the message paraphrases verse the message paraphrases verse 41b. There is a part of you that is eager, ready for anything in God. But there's another part that's as lazy as an old dog sleeping by the fire. Peter failed his master as much as he failed himself when prayer watching broke down, and in his tired condition, he fell fast asleep. It's no wonder his communion with the Lord was broken. Do we regard prayerlessness as a serious deficiency in our Christian lives? Soon we will be coming to the climax of Holy Week and to the celebration of Easter. And as is our custom, we will spend more time in prayer and meditation as we reflect on the significance of these events. It will be a special time but we can't rely on it. We need daily communion with Christ. Prayer is communicating directly with Him. And when we spend that time in communication with the Lord, it will help us avoid falling into temptation. There are times when we are overcome with tiredness and fatigue, and we just want to fall asleep, especially if it is at the end of a busy day. We must be aware that our communion with the Lord is never broken. Thirdly, Peter's contact was distant. And we pick up again the words of our text, but Peter followed Jesus at a distance. He followed Jesus afar off. The text refers here to physical distance. In today's language, we might talk about social distancing. Peter, if you like, was socially distant from Jesus, his Lord and Master. He didn't have to be because he'd been in Jesus' company for three years. He was part of the family bubble, so to speak. But here he was, following from a distance. May I suggest that his physical distance also describes his spiritual distance. 
Peter was suffering from a failing faith and a faltering loyalty. His courage deserted him at a crucial moment. For all his brashness and confidence, he was weak. Oh yes, of course, he still loved his Lord. He was still keen to know what was happening to his master. He was near enough to be interested, but far enough away to be immune from all that close fellowship and what that fellowship might cost. We read in verse 70, but Peter denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Peter was far enough away not to be caught up in the total cost of all that was about to unfold. As Jesus approached the judgment hall, and in a short while afterwards, the cross itself. How often it is the case that we are not completely caught up in the total cost of what is going on. This week, as we follow the steps of Jesus to the cross itself, as we once again watch Him dying there for us, paying the ultimate sacrifice. Do we fully grasp it? Do we understand it? Do we realize the implications all this has for our own lives? Or do we want to keep our distance from all of this? Finally, Peter's company was questionable. Verses 69 and 71, now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and the servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said. Then he went out to the gateway where another girl saw him and said to the people there, this fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. It appears that Peter had come to the courts of the high priest's palace sometime after Jesus had gone through it. He was in bad company, lingering in the background with the servants. He sat by the charcoal fire with those who mocked and sneered at Jesus. It was no place for a disciple to be at that time. Peter exposed himself to attack. Herbert Cragg, whom I quoted from earlier, writing on Matthew 26, verse 58a, asked this question, is that what's wrong in your life, that you are in the wrong set? You are in the wrong friendship? You are finding your pleasure and comfort among those who are ready to despise and to mock and to nail Christ to His cross. And as with you, Peter's presence there was based on a lie. I know not the man. Peter's presence in the wrong company was challenged by a look from Jesus. In Luke 22 and verse 61a, we read, the Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. May that loving, searching look of wounded love reach into the darkest parts of our backsliding lives. Peter was socially distant from Jesus. It's no wonder he took the steps that eventually led him to his failure. Let me ask you, are you following Jesus from a distance, from afar? 
When you are challenged about your faith in Jesus, do you deny you even know Him? Do you keep socially distant from Jesus so that you don't have to experience the cost of discipleship? I trust that during this Holy Week, you will come close to Jesus, that you will identify with Him, that you will take your stand for Him, and that you will allow the implications of His death for you on the cross to transform your life so that you will indeed follow closely after Him. Amen.